This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Okay, I'm calling to order the meeting of the Ad Hoc Grant Search Committee for May 2nd, 2024 at about 2.03. And we have myself and Kate Brooks for the committee. And our three guests today are uh, Christina Johnson, COA Director, Kate DeSanto, our Outreach Coordinator for the COA, and Janet Kane, the COA Board Chair. And we're primarily here uh, to talk about the service incentive grant. But before we do that, uh, just ask if there's any open time for the public people out there. I'm not seeing any. Uh, and Kate, I'm sure you won't mind if we defer on the minutes, <laughs> whatever they were <laughs> last time. Uh, we'll, we'll pick them up. Uh, it's not a, not a big deal. Let's jump right into whatever's happening here with the SIG grant. Um, I did, uh, I can share my screen. I know, Christina, you sent around the um, a form just the other day that um, showed something about the um, the plan, I guess, of what it was all going to be about. Um, and I, without going into everything, and this is just I pulled from the website. So these were the the main categories that are available oops, yeah. this year. Um, and so I'll let you take it from there. I know you've had a pre meeting with some of your folks to think about what might be. Usable, useful, yes. um, doable. So these are three yep. big categories, and so I'll let you take it off. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, yes, I, we actually uh, had two meetings yesterday um, internally in our department with um, Kate and Pam, and um, Janet actually joined that uh, meeting because she wasn't able to join the later one. And then we met with two of the members of the um, COA board. So I feel like and I've also talked one on one with um, Sylvia, who's a member of the board. So I feel like we're getting good feedback from um, various people. So we narrowed it down um, at this point to three categories that we're going to do um, the intent to bid for. I, again, as you guys know, it doesn't it's not binding that you are submitting three proposals, but it covers <laughs> us. Um, and the three categories um, are the prov provision of transportation services. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'll list the three. Um, other innovative programming and senior center modernization. So um, there is a little research that um, both Kate and I, um, you know, various things we said we'd look into um, as well as, you know, if I can get more clarity from the MCOA, you know, they give you brief little paragraph descriptions, but, you know, more information obviously would be welcome um, if there is any. And, um, but, so there's things, you know, transportation, we were just thinking, you know, yes, we have a van and it's great. Um, I feel like more and more we're having to turn down people because we're already booked at the given time. Someone's looking for a doc, you know, a ride to a doctor's appointment, et cetera. Um, transfer so the way we would use the transportation SIG grant would be to um, set up sort of backup transportation if the van is not able to be in use and whether that's volunteer drivers, which of course brings up the whole issue of liability, et cetera, um, which is one of the things we need to look into. Um, there's also Uber and they have, um, and Kate knows the most about this, but there's a, there's, there is a category under Uber, um, a program designed for um, older adults um, and you know, so it would be probably we would use that to receive, you know, we would receive a certain amount of money and we would use that to um, either set up a volunteer program or purchase, you know, Uber credits, basically, um, for backup. Um, so we still need to flesh that out. Uh, I mean, all of this needs to be fleshed out. We obviously just started this conversation. Yeah. Just two two quick things before we go too yeah. far. 
Um, yeah. I think I I think I understood that um, we wouldn't want to do any or we are not eligible to do a continuation of what we currently have on board. It has right. to be something different from what little I heard from you, Christina, on that. And yeah. then um, just just to note that as I read the background stuff on this, um, you have to. I don't remember us putting in the intent to bid last year. Did we actually do that? We did. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, anyway, you can't you yes, can't yes. put in for the grant unless you put in for the intent to bid. So exactly. the idea of putting in two or three for the intent to bid is good. But I think by the time the application is due, we'd we'd probably have to narrow that down a bit. So, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we discussed actually, you know, last time we, we applied for two. But right. due to I mean, that was a lot of work. A lot of hours were involved and in just just applying. And then, of course, we were and we're happy we got both. <laughs> But, yeah. it, you know, it also means a lot of work at yeah. once. Um, so we're probably just going to, we, we decide we're just going to ap apply to one of these. I got it. Okay. Because I think my, I, the transport one is interesting. I, I don't know about Ubers coming to Southampton very much, so I'm not sure about Uber credits. <laughs> Maybe. I know. Well, that's another thing we want to look at. This is yeah. what, yeah, we don't have the answers to that. So, yeah, we need yeah. to look into that. <laughs> okay. So that's one. So that's up to right. 25000 Yeah. And the other thing to mention is even we don't, you know, you can apply to these for smaller amounts than, it, you know, it's up to. So, okay. uh, I mean, they obviously encourage you don't <laughs> apply for more money than you think you need. So, right. um, okay. So that was the transportation. Um, I'll actually go to the senior center modernization. Um, you know, at first, at first glance, you know, I, my initial thought was, well, no, I mean, we're working on getting a new senior center, you know, years from now. Um, that wouldn't, you know, make sense. Um, but then, you know, it was brought to my my attention that we could use that money to get um, outdoor seating, um, you know, tables, chairs, um, signage. Um, because I mean, we hear a lot, people don't realize really the senior centers back in the back of this building, um, you know, so things like that. And they would be one time and this grant would be different in that it's a one time purchase and we'd have it, we'd have the stuff, mm -hmm. um, and the signage, not so much maybe, but at least any kind of outdoor furniture could then be used at the new place as well. Right. Right. Um, so, so again, we wouldn't be using $25,000, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but that was the way we were thinking of that. Um, so, and then the other innovative programming is a good, kind of a good catch all because it's really open, um, whether we wanted to, you know, focus on inter, you know, they even list as an option intergenerational programming or nutrition or, um, any kind of programming we don't currently have. Um, we, we, we just liked that category because it could cover a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. What, one quick question in the, in the senior center modernization about halfway down, it talks about enhanced safety and accessibility, such as a loop system. What's a loop system? Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> okay. Um that's that's on my list actually to look into because I don't know if anyone else knows. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I okay. think that might be a hearing device, but I could be wrong. Like, uh, it is. Oh. Yep, it is. I just Googled it. It says okay. hearing loops are the internationally accepted standard for providing hearing accommodations. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So Which we talked about when we have a yeah. presenter that it's really hard to hear, you know, I mean, just... My partner has uh, wears hearing aids, and and it's very difficult with the way the acoustics are to really hear. Right. And so. Right. So that's hmm. right. So there's, you know, we could ask. So again, going back to, we could, you can add, you know, in that category, say we would like this, we would like to do this, and um, so, yeah, I think I think approving the acoustics would certainly be helpful in here. <laughs> I will also say that, uh, you know, doing an application for s concrete items, I feel like is a little bit more simple than doing uh, an application for 
say like the memory cafe where there was a lot of like detail behind it. And I also wonder if they would look at like the purchasing of accessibility things is different than, you know, whatever, innovative programming or something. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my yeah. videos. Like, I don't know what's going on with my camera. It just doesn't want to stay. <laughs> okay. It just doesn't want to stay on. But, you know, <laughs> I felt like the the memory cafe took a little bit of energy because we wanted to really put a lot of like you know thought into the actual like programming. Like a hearing right. device seems pretty concrete, and that would be a one time purchase. So, um, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Right. There's definitely something attractive about that, that, yeah, yeah. It would be. And the hearing, um, hearing loss is mentioned in the one above too, in the other yeah. innovative programming. So, so, so Kate, just to clarify, is this like a, something that, that an individual person would wear, or is this a, a, a like a acoustic uh, module or something on the wall in the senior center, for example? It kind of seems like as though it's an additional thing that you can purchase. I'm looking online. There's a bunch of devices, but they, let's see. Um, Oh, I see here. So yeah, yeah it, says, it says a T-coil. Yeah, it says it um, can be used uh, by people with hearing aids. And then I can send a link about it after if you'd like. Yeah, to, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if yeah. you know, if it were individual things that we had to buy, or mm -hmm. is it something that we would install in, you know, a couple of say, you know, a couple places in the in the center to just improve the the um yeah. you know the acoustics i yeah i don't know enough okay yeah. so it's personally of an audio source connected to an amplifier which processes a signal and it's then sent to the final piece the loop cable um it's a in its simplest form which i appreciate is a wire placed around the perimeter of a specific area um but it can be specially designed layout to cover more complex areas so oh, interesting yeah it probably helps filter the noise um, must be yeah yeah so huh. i can send an article um yeah be good this to one just looks know. actually really really good and it has diagrams and whatnot um yeah, but it says be... it cuts out unwanted background noise and you uh -huh. don't have to use a receiver or headset it can work directly with people's um that sounds pretty cool. yeah that sounds interesting um, yeah yeah but it can be used with um so it can be used by anyone with a compatible earring aid um and is very inconspicuous so it's nice you don't don't want to call anybody out necessarily. They might not feel comfortable. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. yeah, so, okay. I will say too, with the modernization, we also talked about um, potentially a portable TV similar to what is in the select boardroom. And that way we can util utilize it for programming because I'm sure it was really hard. Let's use the, um, the presentation for the senior center as an example. We had everything up on that one screen, but folks that were sitting in the back couldn't see it. So having a secondary screen that might be able to assist with additional projections so that folks that are in the back can also access the materials being shown on the screen. Um, but also we could utilize it for other programming opportunities or even just like a welcome board when you first walk into the senior center. Um, so it's not just only used for programming. So we could have the schedule of activity of events, that slideshow that I know Janet's been wanting <laughs> for a while. Um, we could have it listed on two of the computers so it can be a multi-purposeful thing yeah. but if we ever need to in, close caption anything it could be a designated screen for closed captioning as well so yeah hmm. when you walk into many senior centers there is there's a screen when you come in um mm -hmm. listing all that and and showing pictures and stuff so we're well, showing showing the events for the week i know when we went to hadley to visit that was right you know, it was something, you know, right there as you walk in and you kind of saw what the what the events were for the day or the week or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I guess you could kind of program that on your current screen. It's just that that's in a different location. But I mean, it's just a program, isn't it, that you would feed into? Yeah, I don't know. think it's PowerPoint. I think it's a specific program. And I think we'd have to reach out to other communities yeah. to see what their, the program is, I guess. Yeah. OK. OK. So any something along those lines. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, just the idea of intergenerational programming, uh, I would love to see us do I something would. there. I think that's just, you know, anything I ever sort of was experiencing when I was down in Maryland, uh, they, there were a couple of centers that were, or I guess housing areas that were built, but they were purposely um, intergenerational. And it just, just seemed like a great idea. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know that much about it, but. Um, everything you read, it benefits both, you know, all the groups that are involved. So. Right. Mm 
So my kids have been asking they have they an intergenerational on. playground. They put one in and it's it's pretty cool. They have like an area where kids can swing. They have ex- outdoor exercise equipment. So it's like fitness based. It was it was pretty neat. That's what at Armbrook? Hmm. Yes. Wow. Okay. My kids want to play bingo. So keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> They'd love to come and play bingo with everybody. Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. For books, or, of course. But that'd be fun if they came with like their grandparents or family members or yeah. people. Sure. Yeah. So well, I think all three of those are good, good categories to focus on. So mm-hmm. that's, um, I, I didn't, um, when I looked at things, I, it doesn't tell you, it, it doesn't let you download the, um, the intent to bid form at all. It just says apply for the, you know, the intent to bid. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to do that. So it doesn't sound though, like it was very many questions or much of anything. No. It's just registering in Christina and then the COA for Southampton and, you know, naming the programs just as this intent to bid part, I think is not. It, assuming, yeah, assuming it's the same as last time. It was, yeah, yeah it was very easy. So mm-hmm. that didn't seem like it was that big a deal. Um, and that is due the 8th, is it, right? Uh, um, uh, yes. Yeah. Ninth. Yeah. Yeah. I think Thank it's you. the 8th that uh, I put it on my calendar somewhere. Uh, I think it's the 8th. Yeah, yeah. it's the 8th. Uh, the 9th is brunch yeah. luncheon. <laughs> it says 8th oh, at 4 o'clock. Yes. Uh, Thursday. Yeah, I was actually going to do it um, after this meeting, assuming we didn't change anything. So Mm -hmm. just to get it done. I I don't see any particular reason not to put it in. If if it's that simple, there's really nothing that has to be written in in terms of even what you're looking for or how much you might be asking at this point. Right. So I I, go ahead. (laughs) Anybody have any other thoughts? I mean, these seem like great categories. I mean, I I don't see any reason not too offhand um and it's not like you even have to really disclose to them i know that you're thinking forward to like a new senior center but it's not like you have to put that in there that you're working no. towards a new senior center right so no plus all these things can be transportable to the new facility as right. well there's nothing that we leave behind and yeah i mean that, that's going to be a few years down the road so oh by then that technology will be obsolete yeah, yeah exactly. right. That's probably just, <laughs> and we can use it for another five years, and it's not a problem, you know. So maybe yeah, we should exactly. get to an Ethernet cable. Is that a category? Well, um, I don't okay, know. Okay, Kate, it's enough. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I would love one in the office on that other desk. So, <laughs> so <laughs> oh yeah, we would love that. <laughs> so, what well, some of this this programming, uh, like I told. Christina, the other day that, you know, once we get through town meeting, we've got money in the budget or through town meeting, if it all proves to start doing the Wi-Fi connection for the entire town hall. So not just the COA, the entire town hall, which is about a, at least a $15,000 project, if not more. So that's, that's really that's gonna say, definitely on good. Scott's radar. So that's going to yeah. no, be very big, excited about that <laughs> big undertaking. So I was going to say, we're getting hit with the times. Well, yes. yeah, maybe we might join the 21st century pretty soon. I was going to say, we're a little behind with the times. <laughs> <laughs> we might join the century soon. So I'd, I'd say, yeah, if this is due the 8th, I mean, there's no particular yeah. reason to wait. Why not get no. it in um, and do that? Now, while we do that, I did pull up. I was able to download the application mm-hmm. for the real grant. Um, right. They do let you do that. So I thought I'd share that so you know, and I'll send it around too as a as an email attachment so you can take a look at it more uh i think this does it hopefully it's sharing can you see that yes okay do we so want to just... do it like we did last time where we put it into a, a shareable document so we could kind of add in edits and suggestions or is that confusing if yeah people? i don't know does that did that work pretty well last time i, I, don't... I thought it was good yeah okay then yeah um i yeah. can do that okay That'd be great kate yeah so you want me to send it to you, Katie, afterwards, or is it? It's on the website. Uh, yeah, I pulled it down from the website. You have to go into a place and enter it and put it down. Yeah, there. I'll find it. As long, I mean, if I can't find it, I'll email you. But if it, I, yeah. I mean, I've seen last time I pulled it off the website pretty easily. Yeah. So basically, these are it's you know not terribly limiting. It doesn't unlike many grants, it doesn't seem to limit us to characters or words or you know numbers thereof, which. 
I've just been fighting recently for like 500 characters, not 500 mm-hmm. words <laughs> on project descriptions, which is a little challenging. So I um, thought there was something about links. Doesn't, now doesn't look like it in the oh. question here. You may, and that's the trouble is that, and that's why I would really recommend getting it in or aiming yeah. to get it in a day or two before the deadline, which is the 23rd, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just in case the website goes down, the, you know, there's some un- unusual question that doesn't show up here. Right. Uh, there's always some little glitch that surprises us at some point in time. So just not to wait to the last minute to get it in for sure. Yep, I will do it today. I mean, so, I'll do the, well, this the, is this is the actual application part. Though. Yeah, this is no, the real not application. that. Not that yeah. today. <laughs> right. So this one is, um, you know, the whole description of what you're looking for, how it'll be used, um, all that kind of stuff ensure the caregivers will benefit from it, are aware of it, and have access to it. Um, impact and outcome as usual, uh, how they're going to be tracked. All that is just, you know, typical grant questions as far as I would feel. Um, if it's for a one-time project or program, or how you plan to continue it if the program ends, and then how will you document the best practices. So, not a lot of heavy duty questions and then obviously the budget and so they do want the category and they do as usual i think expect some level of in-kind support i I, i'm not sure if it's required but it's i think it's highly recommended from what i read anyway so the application itself is not not terribly onerous compared to some that i've seen i don't know what's going on so i just checked the slide deck it can exceed four pages right thank you Mm -hmm. i knew there was something Four pages? Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is one more than we had last time, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I remember being a pretty tight last time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it I was. think it probably it's probably they, they probably prescribe. I didn't go that far. It probably prescribes a certain font and everything else you have to use, most likely. Yeah. It says yeah. font so. size can't yeah. be changed. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is Diana back before this is due so we can have her? <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> She said she could be available. She's out uh, dealing with her her dad out in Illinois, but I'm I'm not sure when she's due back. It was kind of open ended a little bit, but she's she's on email, so if I need her, I can shoot her an email, um, and she'll respond. I'm sure as best she can. But yeah, I think this you know if we can put this in a Google Doc like Kate suggested, and uh, you know start figuring out though. I guess the question is how to how to narrow down those three and say okay, where how do we go about narrowing down those three? Where do we think we have either the greatest need and or the most info that we can pull together to make a convincing argument. So, um, you know, if we were to focus on one, I don't know, between Christine and Kate, do you have a sense right now of what would be the top one out of those three in terms of priorities? I keep going, I keep changing my mind, honestly, because I've been mulling this about uh-huh. um, at, at this moment, I, I guess maybe the modernization in ter- only because there's, I mean, it depends on the answers we can get for the transportation, I think, because there's some up, there's some open ended questions about what we can actually do. Um, so if we get those answers, my, you know, to, and even an hour from now, my answer might mm-hmm. change. But um, however, I mean, if, if we, if I strictly just answered the greatest need, it would be transportation. Mm-hmm. However, the other thing also to keep in mind is we would have fund this extra funding for a year, and then unless we found a way to continue it in the budget, it would then go away. Um, and of course, these grants are dis- are in the hopes that what you start, you don't have to have go away. But right. still, it's a reality if we yeah. if we no longer have that money. <laughs> um, yeah. That's why I, I like the know, single what, purchase stuff. Right. Well, that's, that, <laughs> you that's get it, and then you don't need to buy it again. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's the hard thing, too. I mean, aside from whether there's Uber or not around here. Right. You know, it's not like we're in, like, a more, ac- well, more of a municipality, <laughs> per se, you know, that does have access to, you know, taxis and trains and buses, and we got nothing. So, you know, to make that argument, I think, is pretty tough and certainly to buy a vehicle that wouldn't even get you you know half a vehicle probably um but i mean it you know then you'd have to worry about all that costs associated with the vehicle so right i, I understand Could you reach that, out to I, uber 
Like, well, did you did you talk to, to them out. just to see? Like, because I know yeah. that they have Uber Help. Like, we reached out to them through Smith because our transportation yep. is hard in this yep. area. Yeah, um, it's on my list to reach out to them because I think it's good to have the, those resources in general. Um, yeah. They have a specific, they call it like the senior program um, that is dedicated. It's HIPAA compliant. Um, it, I yeah. think it goes along with Uber Health, um, but it's there are folks that are specifically trained to be able to manage like going to medical appointments, picking up prescriptions for folks. So it's on my list to kind of do some more research. Uber has come to my house though, and we live... We don't. Oh, yeah. We can't get a pizza delivered here, but Uber came. So <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, it might be worth because of the fact that we don't have public transportation, and we do have a lot. Of, we, I mean, I don't know if we have any statistics or information about people who can't access the senior center because they don't have transportation. Like, I'd be interested to know what that popu- population would look like, or you know, how many phone calls you've been getting about people who are not able to attend medical appointments because they don't have transportation or can't afford it. You know, I just, I, I, I wonder if our argument would actually be a little bit stronger because there is no public transportation option that's disability friendly. Like that would, that would address a, uh, an accessibility right. issue. Yeah. I think too, especially with transportation, like I kind of, I'm with Christina, I go back and forth. I like the tangible nature of the modernization project, but like transportation obviously is a huge issue. Um, I mean, some of the the um, rides that we need to kind of not take on because of medical appointments is just going grocery shopping, buying fresh fruits and vegetables, going to community pantry. Um, we can't we can't do rides on the weekend. So even folks going to the community covered isn't an option through us. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of avenues that that conversation can go down. There's definitely a need in town, though. Um, I yeah, would say. good point. So. Mm. Yeah, I would just look at how you're answering the questions, you know, think about are we able to answer all of the questions, you know, because I think from like an accessibility standpoint, or sorry, a disability access standpoint, right, like cultures and languages is kind of a little bit tricky in Southampton. But I think that question would better be answered through this, um, either like the hearing loop or the transportation yeah. uh, solution. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try yeah. to think about, should we make one application for each of those three things to start? And, or do you think we should just, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying like to plug ideas in, or do you want to just do, do you want to think about it? Like, and try to come up with like whichever one you'd really like to, to hone in on, or maybe we could even pick two of them. So I'll just say like the transportation one and the modernization one, like I don't know. I, I feel like I'll follow. No, I can't. Like I'm happy to help with whatever. I I don't just I think we're pretty convinced. Kate, I think we're going to submit one. So then, do you want to just pick which one you want to do, and then we it's can send the application? Thing, so. Oh, totally. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we may not be able to pick right today, but I mean, I think you know within the next week, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. we'd have to narrow that down, right? Yeah. So, absolutely. Um. Yeah, I think what I'll I'll do. I mean. Kate and I am sure we'll both have it on our mind here and there, or even over the weekend and, and the, and, you know, as well as you guys, if it, if you think have an opinion. Um, and then on Monday, I will check back in with Pam and, um, you know, Ted and Dennis and, and, Sil- uh, and Sylvia were involved. And, and cause I, 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 you know, I would love more feedback because I do keep going back and forth in my mind, but I think yeah. that's a really good point, Kate, about, Yes, kind of going through the questions and like and deciding what yeah. can we actually answer, <laughs> right? And I, and I wonder, and I don't know if I'd call it a a kind of a pros and a cons list necessarily, but some sort of a list of you know what do we know, right? And you know what kind of questions do we have to find or research do we have to do or how much don't we know, you know, so that we can get a you know you can probably get a, a good sense of which one do we feel like you know we can really speak to. I mean it you've got to present a good convincing rationale. And I think you can only do that, you know, if you have, have solid knowledge and data to back it up. So mm-hmm. um, stuff that requires a lot of research now mm, might take up more time than we think to, right. to get it there. I don't know. Um, so Chris, but I think sort start- of, sort of a, sort of a pros and cons kind of list is all yeah. I'm saying is, you know, you know, this would, you know, whatever, this would be good because, and this, this doesn't yeah. work because, or something, I don't know. 
Yeah. So I was going to throw this, and I don't expect you to have an answer to this, but um, I know Amy and I have um, asked Scott, but I'm sure, but I'm sure he doesn't have an answer to this either. But just in general, even before this grant, we've been interested in what it means for the town if we had volunteer drivers drive people to appointments if the van's not available. And this comes up with this grant too. Yeah. And, and I don't know who can answer that or what is involved in answering that, yeah. you know, about I the think, liability. <laughs> yeah. I think it's part of the town insurance liability problem. Um, I don't I guess other community do it. So we have to figure out how they do it. You know, other communities do do it. Reach out to other COAs, Christina, and see what they I know done. in Hatfield, um, the town just absorbs the liability. But that's one example. I don't know the answer about other places. Um, I'm moving to you know, Hatfield. I'm moving to Hatfield. Oh, I know. They have unlimited money, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I can check with Scott and we could maybe talk to our our um, municipal insurance representative person and see, you know, if we had to put a writer or something on the insurance policy, you know, what yeah. what would that entail? I, I, I don't know, but we could certainly take a look at that. Um, well, I'm just throwing it out because even if we don't go with that category, it's a question um, you know, in Amy's last days today, but we've taught Amy and I have talked a lot about because um, obviously she's been the volunteer coordinator about, yeah, what that looks like if we could have volunteer drivers or not. So that's why I'm still, you know, I think it's important to have that answer if we can either way. Mm. Would they drive just the van? No, no, no. See, they wouldn't drive the van. They take their personal cars, Kate. That's the issue. Oh. Yeah, the van we have. I mean, Frida, we have to have a trained, yeah. certified driver. So. Trained well, driver. That's, so what, that's why I was curious. So they would be using their own personal vehicle? We, yeah. We've done this in the past. We thought we could get insured by RSVP. And then we found out that, oh, no, 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 that's only if this. So we've stopped doing it. Um, fortunately, we haven't had any tragedies while we were doing it inappropriately, accidentally. Of course. And, and, that's, so, bro um, and that's brought up because... And it's brought up an issue because there's a there's quite a few people out there that are you they know they've gotten volunteers in the past and and then they're actually well and I understand they're they're kind of angry because then I you know I'm saying no we can't do this um, so it's also hard because there's a big part of the population that was used to having this as an option that no longer does so yeah hmm. just throwing that out there that we. We kind of need an answer in general about that. <laughs> well, I can certainly ask. I I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm I not know. sure I would expect a positive answer on that. So it would be yeah, good yeah. to to find out how other communities are doing it if they're using, you know, a town owned vehicle. That's one thing that would put it on a town insurance policy. Right, right. If you're using your own insurance policy, I know, for example. <laughs> Janet and I <coughs> sorry, have a friend who was starting to do Uber. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, he couldn't because the insurance policy wouldn't cover. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I'm dying, sorry. <laughs> have a sip, Chris. <laughs> yes. We'll get a sip. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I... I I mean, and then once you tell a volunteer, well, now you're, you, you know, you need to put something on your insurance and you need to do this and that. Now they're probably not as likely to want to volunteer. So could you get like, a? I mean, it would, you'd have to account for maintenance. I was going to say there's no car you're going to get for twenty five thousand dollars either to set up like mm -hmm. a volunteer drive, like a. Well, I know. Vehicle. Yeah, that wouldn't cover a car. I mean, what's entailed in getting a car? Yeah. I mean, we talked about maybe who could we approach about donating a car because I know Hadley had a do car donated to them from Steve Lewis, but, you know, we just don't have any big places like that. And I don't know if our argument, because again, this isn't something we would need every day or even maybe multiple times a week. This is, this is right, right. maybe once a week, you know, at most. So it's a need, but it would be hard to justify getting a whole vehicle. 
four. <laughs> yeah, we can be, be, I think maybe Uber. I mean, vouchers might be yeah. a, If they show up, just saying. Uber is <laughs> notorious for not showing up for medical appointment transportations. Yeah, yeah that's not good. <laughs> but we deal with it at Smith a lot. Oh, man. Yeah. So so what I what I tried to say before I had this coughing fit was that this guy was going to be doing Uber. He couldn't do it with his insurance policy because it would be treated as running a home business kind of thing mm -hmm. with your car and they, they yep. wouldn't even touch it. So anyway, um, it's it's not simple uh, to have people in their individual cars, right. you know, sort of formally scheduled. I mean, I've certainly taken a neighbor to doctor's appointments, but it's not because it was a scheduled thing that, you know, right. ma made me do that kind of thing, you know? So I know I don't say this to people, but sometimes we've been like, I've been tempted to be like, well, if you just figure it out on your own and we're not, you know, you can do, it. but yeah, but because we're involved, obviously it now becomes the COA. And yeah. so, um, it would, it would be great if you can find out, I mean, from Hadley or anybody. Okay. I mean, you know, we'll call three or four of them that. and just find out what do they do and how, you know, how is that managed? I mean, is, is that a town vehicle or a personal vehicle? And I just ask that question about insurance because that's yeah. gotta be the, the, the stumbling block. I would be sure. Mm. Yep. Okay. So do you guys want to get together like in a week's time and, or just start working on this as is and, um, then get to get, well, yeah, a week's time is what the ninth or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Would that make sense or? I well, if we determine what we're going to be working on on Monday, right. If we do that after the weekend, I don't know how much work I'm going to be able to do between Tuesday and Thursday, just like full transport. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's true. yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so we I, don't we don't need to have a meeting. I mean, I'm just saying, if, you know, if you guys are going to work on just ch chiming in and out on that Google document, you know, until we get that to a place where we might need to just put in everybody's set of eyes and, and thought process that can probably just continue in the Google document for a while. I just, you know, we ought to put a a date for another meeting, though, to, you know, for just sure. to what sure. about the, like Tuesday, the 14th? OK. I'm just I'm throwing just throwing that out there because Mondays are yep. tough. Uh, yep. I'm I'm just throwing out. Um, Kate doesn't work on Tuesday. Oh, so. well, uh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's good for you, Kate? Um, and the other Kate too. Yeah, the other Kate. <laughs> Both <Sorry>. Kates. <laughs> I'm in the office Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, and I could can... do Monday if you wanted to do. All right, well, we just here you are back at Monday, Monday the thirteenth. Yeah. As not? long as it's afternoon, we have a memory cafe in the morning. But yeah, as long as it's in the afternoon. What about Monday the 13th at one o'clock? I think, yeah, that works. Memory That's cafe good. will be done by then? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's 13th at one o'clock. All right. Okay. Hey. Got it. And that'll give us enough time if we need to, to shift or change anything. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good. All right. That's good. Yeah, so by then, if we can just maybe um, just work in that shared document and put some thoughts down and see which one makes the most sense to try and focus on. I think you know, it's, it's a lot easier, I think, to go for something very specific. As much as I like the intergenerational one, it's really going to take know. a lot more thought, yeah. I think, in terms of what, what that would consist of. And I'm sure we could look up various things online and copy somebody else's program, but that isn't really, you know, necessarily the right way to do it either. Cause you want to do it for free, like have a daycare, you know, daycare yeah. visit or just like, you know, something that's right. just a pro, you know, cheap program. Yeah. Well, that's what I was about to say. These are things that I feel like we should look into separate, you know, from yeah. the, this brand. Right. So. Uh, yeah. It's not, it could be another, you know, programming thing, you know, right. like, you know, whatever day is, you know, parents yeah. and grandkids day or something or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, exactly. something like that. Sure. All right. Well, does that do us good enough for today then? Yeah, I think so. All I'll right. do, I'll try to just do that document and then, you know, just have it ready for whenever you make a that would be great, final Kate. determination. Yeah. 
All right. So, Kate, you'll throw that in the Google Doc and send the link yep. around. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'll Thank be happy you. to do that. Thank All right. you, everyone. This has been yeah. helpful. No problem. Thank you. Thanks right. you joined yeah, in. Yeah. Later. So, we'll Kate Rooks and I. Okay, I'll just stay. for a second. Yeah, um, I'll you, you and I might need to have another meeting at some point. Um, have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> we we got uh, just a half a minute of feedback back from that. Uh, one I saw. Stop. It wasn't a heck of a lot, frankly. It I mean, a like lot it was of it, computer generated. Yeah, I think honest. there was a little bit there, but part of it talked about you know community engagement, and we get you know extra points for stuff, and so um, I don't know. I mean, we need to. Um, figure out how to proceed with that. So I got an email from Alex, the guy at tie and bond. Uh, and I'll, I just, just read it actually. So I'll share it with you. I'll send it around. <clears throat> but he was saying too, that he didn't think, you know, it was a lot of feedback, but he did note like two or three points in it. Uh, let me see if I just pull it up on my phone for a second here. <clears throat> Where to go. Of course I buried it. Oh gosh. Um, so I was, I mean, the feedback was very quick. So I've, they're at least <laughs> adhering to their promise of a quick turnaround for feedback. I, right. I literally didn't expect it the same day, but anyway. So Alex's few notes were about, um, they want to know that the community supports the project. Um, development in small rural, rural communities is typically controversial. So if it was funded, would it move forward? That was his take on one of their questions. A 10% match would give us bonus points. So we'd have to figure out I don't remember if the match was both in kind or cash. I don't recall. <clears throat> um, and then because it would be a planning or zoning kind of grant, the project should showcase robust community engagement plan, which we definitely would have to do some sort of a survey or something maybe. I mean, I think the grant category itself goes up to 150000 So even though they've only put in that 30000 dollar figure for the study mm -hmm. there's more room to to do more so you know they might we could do a little survey thing a survey monkey or tie we could ask tie and bond to do a survey for us frankly um and just add it to the cost so i don't know just things like that maybe you and i could mull over and catch up next week sometime whatever's good sure i'll just say you know nothing gets people more fired up than community engagement around a sewer line <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that like with just like tongue in cheek, like little bit of sarcasm, like woo. Exactly. So I don't know exactly what to do about that, but um, what did you think about it? And if you've got a you know a space in your schedule next week, shoot me a couple of dates, and we can. Well, let's we can just do it because okay. there's right. no time like the present. Um, right. Let's see. <clears throat> So today, oh, uh, I have jury duty on Tuesday. Fun times. Oh boy, <laughs> I could Don't do get town meeting meeting that night, the seventh. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> I could do. Why don't we do it after the town meeting then? Wednesday the eighth. I could do one o'clock. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep, that could work. I think I will set that up. All right. Uh, Wednesday the 8th at 1 o'clock, huh? I wonder, you know, how else could we... Is there anyone that we should loop in ahead of the next meeting to see? Well, like, I was thinking I'd, well, I was thinking I'd, I'd grab, um, you know, Alex from Tyne Bond if he wants to join us. I'd certainly pull Stephen back in. Um, water, I guess we could um, talk to Brett. Um, or is there, like, is there anyone else, like, stakeholders that we should... Yeah be engaged or that they might have ideas about how to engage people i mean this is really we brought this up just because it, it's it's going to become an issue at some point where we just don't have enough access to septic and there's to right. sewer. so um i mean there is potential benefit for for land development but it's like how do you engage those people yeah when they're not even there yet exactly i mean it's a little it's a little of the chicken and the egg scenario you know um um, is there anyone that you can ask at the program? Like, are they close to questions? Uh, I'm gonna look it up. Um, I, like, I just wonder, like, yeah. Um, oh my goodness, this is the one stop. One stop. Yeah, I don't remember. They may have already done all their webinars now. <clears throat> There's probably some FAQ out online though that 
you know, maybe would answer a question that we had, but. Here's all office hours are open to the public. There's virtual office hours for registration. And I'm just trying to figure out where the dates are. No, nope, we're already individual office hours. No, nope, it's already passed. Oh, nope. uh, that was my last idea. Um, so the full application is due June 5th. June 5th, yeah. So I feel some... like this is a benign project. Like, <clears throat> I feel like we have all these open, you know, like we could also look back at our, I'll do, I'll do some Kate digging and I'll go and I'll look at, um, I love pulling on statistics and like little pieces of information out of things, but I'll look at our master plan. I'll look at the previous community surveys about land development and, um, I'll look at what's the other document that besides the master plan, the, uh, well, there's the open Minnesota space one. and recreation. Yeah. Open space and recreation plan. But I mean, the master the plan just, one, the um, one where we, uh, the, what is that? You know, you know the, the, we did that whole like uh, municipal vulnerability planning. I guess, Yeah. Or the hazard. Yeah. MVP. I'll, or I'll the, do some, I'll do some looking about at some documents just to see right. like what past like community. Yeah, and and the plan. master plan. Yeah. The master plan would talk more about, the area. I mean, the one-stop program was just mentioned in there just as a possible grant. It had no no particular relevance to anything. It was just listing grants that might be applicable. That's all that was. But the reason for having that, you know, the rail trail or having sewer is, is in some of those chapters. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll just see what we've already done because that honestly for this something that's yeah. this benign, like I kind of feel like doing an engineering study it's not like a major construction project and it's hard to engage people if you don't even know if it's feasible. I know. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's, let's think about it a little bit and uh, take a look at the, I'll send Alex's uh, note around. Um, okay. Great. So, so you know what he thought about that, but I, I'll think I, agree. About, I, mean, I mean, I kind of feel like either way it's worth, I mean, it's $30,000. It's not like we're asking for a million dollars, right? It's a small amount. I, you know, I kind of yeah. feel like it's worth putting it out there because, I mean, without the engineering study, we're never going to know if it's even going to be possible. Mm -hmm. so, like, they're not going to even be able to weigh in. Do you know if anyone's talked to East Hampton? Or, I mean, we're kind of like doing this as like a, but did, has anyone talked to East Hampton about? I think, I think Stephen has talked to them about sewer up there. Okay. I, I, I just want to make sure East Hampton's in on the plan. <laughs> I think Stephen has talked to them about it, um, but I, I would loop him in on this too. Um, just I'll invite everybody, he and Alex, to the grant meeting on whatever day we just said now, the ninth, was it? Okay, Eighth? I might see him later today because we have a Board of Health meeting today. But I'll, I'll yeah. pass on this information to them as well and that we're trying to figure out how to solicit community engagement and blah, 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 blah all the things. Yeah, because yeah, it, it looks like, you know, that would be, I don't know that any other previous sewer, I mean, way back when there were sewer studies done it was more down in the Hamden Ponds area for one, but there may have there may very well have been some sewer studies along Route 10. I, I'm sure there were, but they're like probably, you know, 15 years old now. And mm -hmm. they're probably in some file cabinet on the second floor of the town hall. Um, Maybe Jerry knows. She might. She might very well, actually. She might, actually. Yep. Jerry or Charlie, they might, if I see either of them, so I'm going to ask them if there's yeah. been prior engineering studies about septic. Yeah. Southampton. I think, you know, laying it along Route 10, I'm pretty sure there have been. Yeah. Way back okay. when. But other than that, I don't know. And I don't know whether they would have had, you know, any um, feedback from residents or anything at the time. It would have happened when I wasn't around. But I'm sure up there we've got some old studies about, about uh, sewer issues. I know there was some related to Hamden Ponds in particular that Ed found for me up there, but we weren't looking for Route 10 area at all. I mean, so. I think sewer on ha Hamden Ponds is really environmentally important. It's just like logistically, it just seems overwhelming to think about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, logistically and costly. I mean, it's just the nightmare. I know. So, All right, so okay, we good. have we have a next date. Um, yes. You know, the last meeting, going back to those minutes, I was screen share. What did we? What did you even talk about? I was screen sharing, <laughs> so I don't think that I really wrote a whole lot. But what I can say that we were yeah. talking, we were talking about 
Oh my God, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, I know, we didn't record it. That's the problem. <laughs> we did an initial, uh, I just mentioned the SIG grant and that we were planning on, like that, that they were going to meet and talk about categories that they wanted to apply for. And there was something we talked about before that. Um, I think we were talking about the expression of interest for the sewer study, weren't we? Oh, okay. Perfect. Because, yeah. because I, that was due. And so, you know, we were going to go ahead and put in that, that, um, application, you know, based on the information okay. that Ty and Bond had given us. Okay. I think that was so about I'll it. Just, just, uh, I'll do a quick, like, yeah, I'll try to get that done by next week. No, it wasn't, wasn't a big, mm-hmm. big effort. Um, I'm trying to think Diana was there though. Right. So, yeah. yeah so I'll just, throw, I'll throw together some quick minutes. Just okay. All right. Yeah. If I think of something, I can always add to it. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Super. we'll try to keep it simple. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, I will make a motion to adjourn if you don't have anything else. That's it. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate okay. it. We are Thank adjourned. All right. Have a good rest of your day. 253. Thank you. Bye now. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.